Hello, and welcome back to another evening with me as I unpack my book collection from my recent move. This will be the one, two, three, fourth, fourth box. And once again, I don't know exactly what's in here. It will just be a process of discovery and chatting about the books that I find in here. like this box had a lot of hardcover big books in here. Let's look at the first one here. Passage by Connie Willis. Connie Willis is an author is, is one of those authors who I, I try to read every book that they write. And I think I purchased this book because this was one of my favorites. It is about scientists who are studying near-death experiences. And they I believe they find, it's, it's been a long time, they find some way to induce near-death experiences or an experience like it. And so the book is about their exploration of that. And also ends up being about the conflict between science and faith and uh, and in classic Connie Willis style, it's also, the book is just a frenzy of activity. There's always so much going on, so many characters coming in and out of the scene. The Connie Willis, one of Connie Willis's tropes is that the main character never has enough time. There's always they're always so busy with lots of demands on their time and lots of people in their life and difficulty getting organized. And the way that plays out in her, Willis's writing is always very fun. It has been some years since I've read this one, but it, it uh, meant a lot to me. Um, it's also very much about death. Though I don't remember it being a particularly grim book, uh, at least not compared to Connie Willis's maybe most famous book, which is about the Black Death. Uh, that one is called Doomsday Book, I think. She also writes a lot of short stories and lots and lots of good ones. Big fan. This this used to be a library book. You can see its call number on the side and a barcode here. How 
to Invent Everything by Ryan North. This is another kickstarted book. Another kickstarted book by Ryan North. I guess I have a few of those. And ah, this one comes with a postcard. And was signed. Okay. Uh, how to Invent Everything is about invention and technology. I think it could be effectively described as the history of the world from the lens of uh, technology. So using technology as a vehicle to discuss human uh, human invention and progress over time. It does like talk about the specifics as well of how to invent, I mean, almost literally everything. And it also talks about inventions that could, like things that could have been invented given the materials and technologies available. There are certain tools that could have been invented hundreds or even thousands of years before they actually were. And so it's also about kind of the process of ingenuity and discoveries or not making discoveries. It has a vaguely fictional premise where maybe you're a you're a time traveler and you go back in time and I think you take over the world by inventing everything before anyone else can get to it or something like that. But mostly it's about, it's about the history of, of the world. It's very good, very entertaining and informative. Dark Banquet, Blood and the Curious Lives of Blood-Feeding Creatures, on the cover there's a vampire bat and a leech. I don't think I've read this book from front to back, but I think I have read some of it because I remember reading about some animals and then looking up videos of them on YouTube and I found someone who, I found a channel where someone was keeping a population of mosquitoes and would feed the mosquitoes. They had a, they had like a um, plastic container that the mosquitoes were in with a mesh over the top and the mesh wouldn't let the mosquitoes escape, but they could they could stick their mouth parts through it and uh, and feed. So so the researcher would would hold would hold the container up to his arm and let the mosquitoes feed off of him, and that was how he uh, allowed his research subjects to subsist. This one is Bonk by Mary Roach. It says, The Curious Coupling of Science and Sex. I bought this one because I read her, the, her other book called Stiff, which was a book about the science of death. And uh, that one was, uh, it was fascinating. Uh, highly recommended if you have any interest in the topic of, of death. It's a very good book. And so I suspected this one would be good too, but I haven't read it yet.
This one looks to be a very candid look at various sexual topics and their and the science behind them. It looks great. I should read this. This one, The Gentle Art of Verbal Self-Defense. I have something of an interest in rhetoric and debate, so I picked this, I saw this, I think, in a thrift store or a discount bookstore, and I picked it up, but I haven't read it yet. The summary on the inside says, hostile language hurts. It creates a toxic atmosphere that can stifle self-esteem and poison personal performance. Even when verbal abuse is subtle, it can be as damaging as a physical blow. Wouldn't it be great if there was a book that could teach you how to detect and deflect put-downs, insults, and other forms of verbal violence? Um, it says this book is a manual for dealing with aggressive and abusive talk and has everything you need to turn from victim to victor in the arena of verbal attack. That sounds very useful. I should, I should read this. This one is not a book. It is a board game. I guess I put it in here because, well, it was probably on my bookshelf because I own so few board games that I don't have a dedicated spot for board games. I bought this one one time when my family was traveling to visit me and I wanted to have a game to play. Uh, this is a nice, simple, fun game, Zuru. It's a pathfinding game where you draw tiles and each, uh, each tile has paths on it and you try to get your character, well, you try to keep your character on the board without following a path to the edge of the board and falling off. Maybe I can find a spot for games because heaven knows I am running out of space on my bookshelves. This one is a recent acquisition. It is called Affinities. And uh, I was in the midst of reading this um, when I had to move, so it isn't finished yet. I got about halfway through, but it's also, it's not necessarily the type of book you have to read front to back. However, I recommend you do because it has a wonderful progression of concepts. This book is was compiled by the people that are behind the public domain review. So all of the works here in this book are from the public, they're in the public domain, meaning they uh, no longer have any copyright on them. Uh, they belong to everybody. And so it is a historic look at art and ideas expressed over the depth of human history and it's really little more than works of 
art or photography or sculpture and then a description of what they are but they the book is curated in such a way that the ideas flow or sometimes the visual patterns flow from one page to the next to the next so it's reading this book from in in chronological order feels very much like a it's 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 a bit like walking through a dream where ideas and free association just flow from one to the next but in this case the dream is the art of human history. I don't know if this is available uh, in general. I it it was uh, its publication was crowdfunded. And I'm not sure if it had the more general publishing run, um, but maybe it did. Also on the topic of art history, this is the visual arts, a history. Exactly that, a history of art, uh, including things like architecture, as well as visual art from all across the world. Uh, this is very clearly a, a textbook, I'm sure it's been used as a course textbook. I don't think that's where I found it, because I, I don't think I've ever taken an art history class. But I have used this book as, as a reference and uh, flipped through it a few times. So, wealth of knowledge here. In general, I really like textbooks. I like, I, you know, so much information is available to us online now. You often don't need a textbook in order to learn anything in particular, but textbooks take a lot of time to put together and they are very structured information. So you're not just reading a handful of Wikipedia pages, you're, you're reading information that builds on itself from one chapter to the next to the next and that can often be very effective in learning things. And I like physical textbooks much more than digital textbooks because they are meant, they're, in most cases, they're not meant to be read linearly. You're meant to jump around and go back and look something up that you read here and return to where you are here and read the inset and then go back and, and read the where you started over here and it's it digital books lack that nonlinear freedom so far anyway. Hmm. What is this? Oh wow. This is a personal piece of writing. I don't know why it was here. Hmm. I'll leave that there. Ka 
Cosmos by Carl Sagan. Classic. Uh, oh, here's my bookmark for it. <laughs> well, uh, it's about astronomy. Carl Sagan was a very popular, highly influential um, science science communicator, I guess, is the term for that. And this is a book he wrote. There's a lot in here. Uh, seems like all the concepts of astronomy, and then also I saw some chemistry in here as well, as well as like historical artistic depictions of astronomical bodies. So it seems like this covers a long. Uh, wide range of material around the topic of astronomy. It was published in 1980. Another textbook. This one is biology textbook, and this one I did use in school. Uh, it was my textbook for, I think, two of my biology classes. It's not light reading by any means, but lots of information here. just kept this book after the class instead of selling it back to wherever. You never know when you're going to need to look up some well-structured information about biology. It could happen at any time. You've got to be prepared. This one is an art book, and it is the art of Spirited Away, which is one of Studio Ghibli's films by, directed by Hayao Miyazaki. Oh, this is not related to that. We can look at that in a second. Um, and if you know anything about Miyazaki, Studio Ghibli, you probably can guess how amazing all the concept for it, uh, concept art for it is, and this, um, this is, this is it, this is a lot of concept art. Character designs, environment designs. Oh, can you believe this? Amazing. Just breathtakingly gorgeous. If you have, if you, you know, next time you watch a Studio Ghibli film, pay attention to the environmental 
the design, the backgrounds, they're always phenomenal. Mm, no face. No face is my favorite. So the thing that fell out of that was a photograph, photographic print. I don't know who the artist is, but it's a photo of someone kissing a kitten. It's a very cute photo. I wonder who the photographer was. Oh, this kitten is so cute. art or anything in my new place yet. I gotta do that. Here is another reference book, Classic Human Anatomy. I'm pretty sure I picked this one up because I was dissatisfied with my other anatomy book that I featured in a previous video. would not be easy to pull out of the other bookshelf right now. But anyway, this is an anatomy book that looks a little more functional than the previous one. chapter is on the head and neck, so it shows the skull and its relation to the face. Here's the skull and the muscles and the skin over the muscles. Front view of the skull, side view of the skull. This section talks about the bones of the skull. And you know the the skull is is one is is one unit, but but you can see if you look at a skull that there are seams in it, and uh, those seams are where separate bones fused together to form the skull as a single mass. So you can see all these different pieces of it that fused. It's a pretty solid book, packed with information. Just, in general, a lot more informative and useful than the other one that I have. And the last book in this box is Sand The Sandman, King of Dreams. Sandman series is seeing a bit of a revival right now because the Netflix series came out and it was a pretty good series. I watched it. I enjoyed it. I wasn't sure how much of my enjoyment was based on the fact that I have read the comics, uh, but people who said that they haven't read the comics also told me that they thought, they thought it was good. And I believe it was renewed for a second season. So I'm excited about that. Uh, the Sandman comic book series is about... Uh, 
<clears throat> it is about the king of dreams. He is a anthropomorphic personification of the concept of dreaming or the phenomenon of dreaming. And so he rules over the land of dreams and he has He's one of the endless. The endless are the rest of the endless are his his siblings. There are the other endless are uh, desire, despair, uh, death, destiny. Destruction and delirium. And this obviously is not a comic book. This is, I think, just an art book about the series. Um, a lot of the kind of weird art so far are, these are covers of the comic books. Uh, it has some writings here, which I think are probably interviews and maybe talking about the production. The comics. There's the Corinthian. Another cover. Uh, here's all the endless together. So, destruction, despair, death, desire. Dream, shirtless for some reason, uh, delirium, and destiny. It's written by Neil Gaiman and it has his uh, sort of classic style of combining lots of different mythologies into the same universe. It's quite fun. Oh, there's Thessaly, she's my hero. box. Thank you for joining me. I have a few more boxes left, so I hope you'll join me for those.